is born with the right forms filled and the correct boxes ticked. Just on the fire, pretty white man who likes to colonize. Each meeting now sealed within a strange checkpoint. Each longing a trespass. Men, women, children have been moved like toys by my good children. Because my eyes match the rolling hills of the countryside and my hair flows in the same texture as the tent. He likes war, makes promises to the poor, but they often die, that's fine, as long as he makes profit right. There are no documents to allow her to enter into his arms. Signatures of trade deals written with the blood of people now told to be grateful for the hands of God that came to shape them. There's a lot of talk about Britishness at the moment. Who's British? Who's not? Who's a British citizen? And can someone's citizenship be taken away? But what does Britishness mean? In this film, some young people of Sheffield went on a quest to try and find out. What does Britishness mean to you? I'm like quite reluctant to, to call myself British, mm -hmm. even though I was born here, I was raised here, I spent all my life here. Because sometimes I think, because of the history of it all, like I'm reluctant to attach myself to that or, or want to belong to that. Mm -hmm. and then again, it's home to, to an extent as well. Yes. Yeah. Obviously my family were born in Somalia as well. I consider myself Somali, sometimes hyphen British, mostly Somali. My initial associations with Britishness, I think it's quite a, st a word that, um, has lost some of its humanity in terms of like the historical history of it. And I kind of link being British to kind of an imperial idea of like colonialism or whatever. But for me, this Sheffield um, and being born here has like a different, as a warmer feel to it. So I definitely feel that I'm from Sheffield. My um, family live here, the people that I love, the community that I was raised amongst. So I affiliate myself more with being Sheffield or like based in the North. I don't really think of um, ideas of Britishness or nationality, I, I think, until it's presented to me in terms of like a tip box or like as a passport. But I definitely feel rooted and somewhat to this country. But I don't think my identity or who I am revolves around where I come from. I feel like in school and in the system, we're taught that being British means that we're free, but we're not taught how to free ourselves. Am I British? Second generation, mum originated from Ireland, dad half Irish, half Asian, British. I find the word hard to distinguish, like does it mean English or does it mean living in Britain? I feel like Britain allows you to be British if it suits it. Work a nine to five, declining crime, find the time to light the skies. Be polite to other Brits, but be fine to hide if it doesn't mix. You have to fit the British criteria. If not, you're inferior and pushed out to exterior. The, the opening line of my piece is, am I British? And I guess this, this question sort of set me up for the whole piece uh, as um, I was sort of answering the question throughout the piece without coming with a definitive answer. So it is the, the whole piece is a sort of thought process as to what it means for me to be British and am I British and what does that actually entail, I guess. Take Churchill in the Queen as an inspiration. Churchill had his flaws and that's pretty blatant. I'm not trying to offend to any bigots hating, but do your research on your idols, they're not all amazing. But I am British, I love Britain. But I love fair relationships like domestic abuse. It's like I question all its actions, yet I let it confuse. I look at all the kids that be dead on the news and I notice how the pattern is systemically cruel. Knife crimes are at an all-time high at the moment, especially with um, with teenage boys. And the media seems to be pointing a finger at, at rap music because they don't understand rap music and because they don't understand this art form. And I think that's a big thing, actually, within, in Britishness and within media. If it's not understood, it's therefore wrong. And if it's not understood, it's therefore to blame. And I think I talk about that in the piece quite a lot. It's like you're giving kids the tools to poison the youth. You teach kids from other backgrounds about Britain in school. Britain needs to learn about other heritage too. So education has failed them. But politicians keep telling them lies and cutting jobs so their home is broken and it's not a surprise. So they turn to the streets 
It acts like a family fine, but this family sells bees, whites and medals with knives. So a kid gets stabbed, retaliation then dies, the cycle continues on and becomes a statistic of crime. Then Britain blames rap music and black music. And that's the worst way, rap's expression of life. So if crime is the only expression to write, maybe we should think about how it got like that in the first place. Britain. After a 24 year break, Carnival is back in Sheffield. Taking the theme of the Phoenix, Carnival rises once again over the Steel City. The Carnival has such a fabulous spirit that brings people together through creativity that Sheffield is just ready right now for that. For, and I mean, look around today. Everybody, all kinds of people are here. I've been traveled to different parts of the world. I always kind of look back at Britain, I'm like, I don't think she understands what she got. And it's not too really good. The place was really are segregated. You realize how fortunate we all are here if we make good of it. Today, everybody taking part, most of the people in that parade, they are today's British people. So this is very British. Because when it comes to the Caribbean people, freedom from slavery is tied very closely to carnival and the celebration of carnival. It's an emancipation. Yes. That's it. That's all I could say. It's an emancipation. When you emancipate yourself from certain barriers and boundaries, it accumulates to this. It ex it's an explosion. That's all I can say. Carnival is an explosion of culture, class, races, creeds, everything all in one. Everybody. And it started in the cane fields of Trinidad and Tobago. That's how it all started in the cane fields. When the big man had their party, the slaves also had theirs. So Carnival was born in Trinidad and it just exploded all over the world. So being on the street is almost is always important because of that sense of, of taking ownership of your town. This is the place where we live, where we work, and the street, being able to be free in the street is a statement. At fruit as an individual is five generations in this country. Britishness means multiculturalism, uh, or it should do. I don't think it does, but I think it should do. Britishness is just um, a variety of culture and like different opportunities for different people, so it's not just based around one opinion. Who better to have a chat about Britishness with but our very own Lord Mayor of Sheffield and self proclaimed immigrant? Come through. Yeah, Come through, buddy. Hi, lovely Hi. to meet you. I think Britain's at that stage where it's trying to really find its identity. That's why there is a lot of discussions on what does it mean to be British. I would feel more comfortable saying I'm more British than I am English. Okay. I just get the feeling being English is just white British. Yeah. Well, how would you, how would you describe that? Because I was thinking as you were saying that, I would consider myself English and British, and then also Caribbean, and then also African. Is, is that in any order? I'm black first, just as like a, like, rather than being from a place, saying the Caribbean, I'm black first. So when it comes to identity, black? Black first, and then British. And then I put in the Caribbean African, because I, I relate to Britain more than anything. Like for me, I'd say I'm a Muslim first, and then everything, like I said, comes secondly, because I think with religion, it kind of embodies British values. Religion does. I think it teaches you Values. What are British values? It differs person to person. But I would say a British value is the acceptance of the other cultures and the multiculturalism that we have in the UK because, like I said, the British Empire, it was an empire, it wasn't a country. For example, where I'm from, Pakistan, back then it was India, and they call that the jewel of the British Empire. So how am I less British than, for example, a white British person? It's interesting because people like putting people in boxes. Mm. I think that's why it's to help other people understand. So like, it's easy to say, well, I'm British, I'm this, I'm that. Sometimes people struggle to understand, well, you can be numerous things, but also those identities can change. They're not written in stone. My first and foremost identity would be, I'm a woman and I'm a feminist. I don't think you can be a feminist without believing in equality generally. Mm. And I think that's where it sort of gets a bit difficult to define. 
if I was just to meet someone, I would first say that I'm Kurdish. But when filling out forms, I do identify as British. I almost feel like being British is, I want to say like a way of life, like just living here makes you British, no matter where you're from. Um, Cause like, I feel like I came here at the age of two, but I've still had almost every opportunity that every other British person has had or every other white English person has had. So I don't feel any different to anyone else. I think every time I feel like, oh, well, listen, I'm, I'm British, I feel bad. I should always sometimes get a knock back in the sense whether literally I see certain far right groups or I'll just come across some sort of racism, would that be like structural racism or just basically just direct racism? And I'm just like, oh, maybe I'm not. Yeah. Do you think in a way with you like moving up to the position you're in now, you've sort of maybe been forced to identify with that whole Britishness aspect a bit more? Possibly because I do get questioned quite a lot and definitely since I've been doing this role, I've never had as much racism as I've had before. I have seen them comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's it's yeah, it's definitely made me question a lot of things and reflect and just yeah, just trying to literally think about my place in society and mm -hmm. my identity like that being Muslim, Somali, British Lover of food. <laughs> With World Cup fever rife, we were interested in finding out how football unites the people of Britain. The Home Football Academy itself, we've got. We did a count of different ethnicities and we've got around 20 to 21 different ethnicities. So you've Bengalis, Pakistanis, Arabs, Somalis, we've got Roma, Slovak, Kurds, Iranians. So we've got a massive, uh, diverse community and they're all united in one thing and that's playing football. Whether they win or lose and the camaraderie that they've got with each other, I don't think you can, I don't think you can find that anywhere else to be honest with you. There's no negativity amongst players, you know, it doesn't matter what level they are, they accept each other and they just come for football. So football is absolutely the glue that binds. My parents are from Bangladesh, his parents are from Pakistan. For us, we're, we're, not, we're not, except we don't feel really part of their culture because we feel that we pray and yeah. sort of swear in English. So we feel our first language is English and always has been. So we don't feel really part of that culture, but when we're here, we wouldn't have it any other way. We, we just wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it's a great country now. I mean, how, what, how many countries do you get the diversity that we have? And then the friendships and the relationships and the understanding of culture, the food and everything. I think it's absolutely outstanding where Britain and British values have been. I think it's something to be proud of. Why don't you want me I think for me, music and, and poetry in general is very much about uh, identity and kind of finding myself in the music. My mum is, uh, she was born in the UK, she's half Ghanaian, uh, and my dad is British Irish. However, I also have the uh, heritage background from, from Germany and that we're in, in a lot of ways I identify as, as Jewish and how um, I, I still feel that I'm attached to that identity. The fact that my great granny kind of escaped Nazi Germany, that, that means something to me. It's interesting when, when people ask me, you know, how I see myself, because I think about how other people see me and I think some days when I walk into, I don't know, a cafe full of white people, I think they see me as a black person. Um, and then I think when I'm around my black friends, they see me as, mixed or light-skinned, but perhaps not black. I, I think back to my great granny who uh, came on the kinder transport and I think Britain provided her a home and she was a refugee. What we need to do is remember that and remember how important it was to provide that space for, um, let's say, uh, Jewish refugees who were escaping the Holocaust. I think we need to remember how important that was um, when we have our preconceived ideas of what it means to be British. When patriotism's next to Satanism, you made this place your God now, guarded till you daily departed. 
Not here to stand impartial, my forefathers martyred, yet injustice harbours. Pressed with oppression and hardship, shipped from harbours to build western civilization. Taj Mahal's and plazas while you lounge in parlours. I could have been made in China, slaved in Libya, killed in Gaza. I don't know how people feel that they have uh, a right to claim Britishness for themselves, you know? Right. You have so many people who um, have a concrete idea of what it means to be British and then they apply that to everyone and if they don't fit that certain mold then they're not British right. um, and and for me that it's kind of nonsensical and that that whole kind of dirty side of patriotism where that comes from where that stems from is dangerous to me and I feel like yeah. I I identify as as British in the sense that I'm I'm happy uh, to be a part of British music culture and popular culture that comes from Britain and I understand that this is the place that I live but as far as taking on a whole place as my identity, I can't relate to that. I feel like we've been sold a bit of an elitist idea because um, having such a strong connection to a place is for landowners. For me, right. it's, for, it's for colonizers and it's for people who uh, benefit off of having that uh, territory. They'd colonize the stars if they could. Kneel to pray against injustice as you should and face the slander of the ever deep wide web. Tell me what is moral good? When subdued by the great grand history omnibus In this face of apathy it seems like moral fuggery Confused ideas, time to chew our fear and then let's swallow up A little wage slavery, go ahead and let me be States built off the backs of refugees we vilify and preach Food plans to food stamps, to slave plantations, to concentration camps Carrying this trauma in my DNA I had a name but you gave me a colour Pioneers of capitalising off the back of Pangea Well I'm tick boxing number why don't you want me here? Why must we live in fear? Why must my blood stay? What does Britishness mean to me? Eating Sunday dinner, mashed potatoes, gravy, sprouts. Britishness to me is caring for your neighbour, being friendly to everyone. Being British, I think, um, it's nice to be part of the society in terms of being mixed you know obviously integrated and there's different backgrounds different languages because we talk about this a lot yeah okay <laughs> cool yeah it's weird you kind of touched on not wanting to assign yourself to something that doesn't accept you right um, it's weird like i'm not born in britain i'm born in jamaica so i came here when i was really young around eight years old and it's weird like going through the naturalization process and mm. signing that piece of paper that then tells you that you're British. Mm. So I didn't think about it as much when I was young, but now when I actually think about it, it's like, well, what is being British for me? Because I've never quite felt home here. I think in so many ways, when you're made to feel like the other, like you don't exist in its system and mm -hmm. there's not that representation in a lot of its institutions, it's like, well, Am I British? Am I Jamaican? Am I? Mm. Well, what am I? Well, a massive Eid Mubarak can have to everybody who's here to celebrate. After some long, hot days of fasting, Eid finally arrives in Sheffield. Community festivals are taking place all around the world, but how do you know exactly when Eid begins? People do ring, let's say, Pakistan and say, oh, have you seen the moon yet? Oh, yeah, we have. Okay, yes, that's it. It's Eid tomorrow. In the Muslim calendar, there are two Eids. There is one Eid that comes after Ramadan, which is a month of fasting. And that's a, a celebration to remember those that are less fortunate and to put yourself in their position. And I think the biggest thing about it is families coming together, spending time with each other and just having a good time. I think it's so nice when like these events happen because it brings everyone together. It doesn't matter what colour you are, you just enjoy it for the sake of just getting together. Ramadan isn't just about not eating food, it's about focusing on your faith. And I think that's the beauty of Islam, that you have this one month that just rekindles your relationship with God and refocuses your energy as to what you're doing with your life. Well, my mum is half white, half Yemeni, and my dad is Pakistani, so I am half Pakistani, quarter Yemeni, and quarter white. I like it because when I speak to people, I can like tell them all the different backgrounds. Like, I can relate to a lot of people, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think being mixed is quite nice. Growing up, I didn't know if I was Yemeni or English. 
I couldn't relate to the Yemenis because I didn't wear a headscarf. Like I, I'm not a Muslim. I'm, I'm like I believe in. Like, I'm a free spirit. I think some people are quite narrow-minded and they don't like to think about other people's backgrounds. They don't like to accept other people's beliefs. And I think, yeah, they just like to don't like to accept anyone else. I went to King Edward. It was very, um, very multicultural, and that's what I loved about King Edward. Everybody was open, everybody was accepting, all the teachers were like, they were happy to help everybody. And that's what I loved about King Edward. I wish I had that kind of like supportive atmosphere while I was growing up, because I think in my school it wasn't like that. So I thought they always kind of neglected the Pakistanis. And in our year, it was always the white people with the white people and the Pakistanis with the Pakistanis. And I didn't like that, because I wanted it to be like a big like community and feel like, you know, like welcoming. I think Britain itself and British people are quite accepting of pretty much almost everything that's, you know, like uh, sexuality, uh, religion, no one will look at you weird if you say you're an atheist or you're... I don't think that you... You know what? Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, yeah. I was going to say, I think it's very area dependent. I think people like to, it's like the tolerance yeah. thing is keep it over there and I'm all right with it. Yeah. As soon as you bring it next door to me, now we've got a problem. Yeah. And let's be honest, like religion, like it's every other, if you look at the tabloids or whatever it is, it's, there is massive Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, not just in politics, in society in general. So I would definitely not say there is a tolerance in religion whatsoever. There's been discussions of, you know, discussions like let's, let's ban the burqa, let's, women can't wear this. Like, it's like, listen, it's what happened to this tolerance? I think you've kind of got to keep it simple and look at who is in the position of power and look at their backgrounds and they're all and it's the truth they're all just elderly middle class white males eaten and yeah yes. there you go and <laughs> <laughs> and and how do you expect things to change um when when people in power are like that because they're the ones making the decisions and kind of dictating how our lives are <clears> going to be lived for us i mean like it's all good and well putting such and such in children's curriculums but what they don't understand is you've got to start from the top down, not the bottom up. It's not going to work that way. So I completely understand what you mean. We need, whether that be more women and more people from the LGBT plus community, more people from a BME background just to represent. I think that's one great way we'll be able to generally have equality in the country. Then mo mostly I believe that the education system hides behind like the European history more. Yeah. And we kind of Absolutely. Look, and we look at a lot of European atrocities as opposed to British ones. In secondary school, there's a very, um, there's like a repeated sense of history of certain things. You do indigenous people, when you do sort of Native Americans, we look at the American atrocities and then we look at the German atrocities, but we never look at British atrocities. And how did it make you feel? I think it just made me feel like um, there's like a lack of accountability. I was born with the right forms filled and the correct boxes ticked because my eyes match the rolling hills of the countryside and my hair flows in the same texture as the Thames. My complexion serves as conservation to your comfort in British. My passport doesn't read empire. It doesn't stop me for random selection before my flight. It doesn't pat me down or grope with just cause. It doesn't empty my luggage, pour my life to the floor. It arrives. I think my poem came from a place of not really understanding what Britishness meant to me. I've never really considered this sort of nationality that I have. And I think it was a very interesting project to be a part of and to hear other people's thoughts because everyone's was completely different. So I guess the poem is me exploring that in terms of the history and culture we have and the unsaid atrocities, which I think is probably why I don't associate with the nationality I have. It arrives on wooden ships with shackles open to claim what isn't ours and rewrite others' history. To label them savage, a brute without correct words, our white saviors renaming the named, those we refuse to hear. There's a sense of shame that's never talked about and I think it's very important to highlight and emphasise that being a white individual who has that privilege to be able to go and not acknowledge those things, I think it's very important to do that because fundamentally that's what got 
Britain to become an economic power and then as a result make an America an economic power. My passport should read values. Past the whitewash of textbooks on the bookshelf, scribble red ink improvements in the margins and highlight our mistakes. Our past and present, this definition of who and what is British, an identity we simply can't ignore. Yeah. Making this film about Britishness and what it means to be British. Right. So what are your thoughts on that topic? Well, obviously I'm British on the way I was brought up in England society at school and stuff, but then my Jamaican came out at home and among, and among my peers. I'm a black man, so a lot of people don't really see me as a British man. They just see me as a black man. So they say, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? I said, England. I said, no, but where are you oh, really from? from, from. from, from so, yeah. yeah. I know that I'm not really from here. What about when you go back home, though? Do you think they embrace you differently? Yeah, they call me English man. Yeah, exactly. I, was, <laughs> I said this the other day. I said the other day, when we're here, we're not English when we're back yard, innit? Yeah. You are English. Yeah. So, yeah. The way I justify myself is I'm a black British man. Mm. That's it. Can't say no more. Black and British. What do you mean? Being black and British? Being black and British. Yeah, you can play a football team, can't you? <laughs> you can do that. Huh? You're talking about black Britishness. You, you're pushing it more to racism now. Right, mm. okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they're asking about Britishness. But you're pushing the subject more towards racism. So what is, is, what is Britishness? Huh? I don't understand when people say, do I feel mm. British? I don't understand I'll it. Give an example. I don't understand the I'll question. I'll give an example. I'm, I'm, I'm African, right? right. Uh, my girlfriend, she's English. Yes. My boys, yeah, they're half African, half, half British. Now, for me to call myself British, right. like government-wise, I have to do a test. Right. I have to go in and do a test with all these questions that I wouldn't even I know, know. That yeah. like someone who is British yeah. wouldn't know, yeah. but I'm expected to know. Right. And I'm, in government's so, eyes, so that makes you? me, that's, yeah. the, that's Britishness. If, if you're white, I guess we probably need a white person here to ask, like, babe, how, what would you class yourself? She, she I come from a small town with small predominantly town. white people. We know we would never move there because I've got mixed race kids right. and I don't want to bring them up there because of the, the views that people have there and the culture that's embedded within that smaller society. Well, I think you can look at the culture, mm. people's background. Yeah, you throw in racism there because that, that's part of it, isn't it? Yes. Britishness. Because someone, mo most, if you look, I think people who class themselves as being British then it's usually white people. Yes. Yeah. As a, as a black person, you, you might, you guys might have been born here, you called English or British, oh, but you'll never be accepted. Uh, no. It's not going to happen. No. Is it? I yeah. was born here, but yeah. guess what? I would, I would never wear an England shirt. Why not? Why not? Because I don't feel that included. So why I don't, I don't, I've, I've let my son wear it. You know, my kids wear it, but. I would never Cup, yeah. wear it. You won't support England. I'm right? not support. I support England. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not wearing no shirt. I wear a Jamaican shirt. Right. I wear, I wear an African shirt. shirt. Nigerian shirt. Yeah. But I'm not wearing no <coughs> British shirt. Not no England. Even though there's no England British. You know, so are, you, are British you aiming England? to change the views of your children? Yes. Or are, are you, do you? Answer your British. Do your, do your children view everything the way you're used to? No. You know what's different? I want to tell you something. There's a difference between the way how we was brought up, brought up yeah. and our children have been brought up. Mm. So my, my first generation uh, British. So my mum came from Jamaica, my mum and dad from Jamaica. So we've got like Jamaican views still. You know, we got brought up like with, with the certain culture, whereas my kids now, they're being brought up British yeah. culture. You understand me? So that Jamaican, it rubs off a little bit, but not. Not too much. It's diluted for the generations. You speak your mind. This is where you get to speak your mind. Where PC culture don't exist. No, that's right. Because <laughs> everywhere else you get judgment now. Barbershop, no judgment. That's you right. Speak your mind. After something big happens, everybody can have their own opinion. Yeah. And everybody can walk about and be off saying their piece. Yeah, man. You can include it. Place where uh, 
I say it's somewhere where black, black male energy lives and doesn't die. Mm -hmm. The only place where it doesn't die. A well-shaven man meets expectation. I learned this in a barber shop. I like to spend time here. These men walk a certain integrity I could only reserve for trying to convince my legs to move. They sow seeds of new beginnings, so sovereign. And they talk the folklore like a sort of absolute. There's an untold beauty in the poetry of these people. The community philosopher shaves seconds from days, perfecting his hypothesis, one of solemn, one of practice. There's a beauty. Shed the old. A man with a clean shaven beard has a healthy mind and a barber is a therapist. Talking about Britishness has many layers of complexities. We cannot talk about it and not talk about empire. We cannot talk about it and not talk about race, identity and belonging. One thing we've discovered through making this film is that we need more spaces to discuss all of these things. And if we had a better understanding of Britain's colonial past, we'd be better placed to negotiate our futures. I don't know, I feel like there's such a difference between the modern Britain today and there's a different Britain that is again fighting for something that's not there, that's fighting for dominance, that's scared of becoming a paper tiger. Um, and I think the modern Britain, we're just fighting for freedom for everyone. I think there's a lot of room for disruptiveness to change the kind of narrative of what is Britishness. Whenever they ask me what's your nationality, I will always say British. I was born here, I was brought up here, this is my country and it does, it is very very important to me actually. Britain is such a rainbow country and they have to learn to accept that. There's no going back now, we can only move forward. Britishness becomes a way, it becomes a way of life but it doesn't mean that you actually have to forget where you come from.